All right, guys, welcome back to the TCI headquarters. Time for this week's preview predictions. We got the Tigers and the Deacons. We've got homecoming. We've got a 3.30 kickoff. We've got a little bit of the chill in the air. Will was letting me know earlier today. So fall football weather coming a little bit. So it's going to be a fun weekend here. Uh, hopefully another win for Clemson as they get ready to go into the bye week and get ready for a, a, a tough stretch to finish the season. We're going to start with our keys. Will, we'll start with you. What's your key this week? Well, we kind of talked about it, you know, earlier in the week about Clemson against the Mesh and how last year they just they sucked on it. I mean, they did. They, did, they didn't play it well. Primarily, the first half of it, it wasn't used on as much because Clemson was playing man-to-man, so the defensive line didn't get pressure. Um, this, this Sam Hartman's not there, first of all. A.T. Perry's not there, right? So I think that helps right there. I mean, nothing against Mr. Griffith. Um, Griffiths, you know, Mitch Griffiths, the quarterback, nothing against him, but he's not Sam Hartman. And so, but they do run, they're running, Davo mentioned, they're running the mesh more um, than probably they did last year. Um, and so they're, they're thinking they're going to see a lot of it. He's actually holding the ball a little bit more. So my key for Clemson saying all that is they got to get pressure on that mesh. Force that quarterback to make a quick decision and or just blow it up like you saw in his past with Brent Venables. I think that's going to be the key. If Clemson does that. And the way the DBs are playing, you know, I know um, all it can do is key here. I know what that's going to be. But the way the DP, DBs are playing, you're going to get opportunities to do some things. And so either get some sacks and stuff like that, big negative plays, I think, and they get them off schedule. And then once you do that, you got to wait for it where you want them. So I think you're going to see the old way, not last year. I think last year was just the mesh. Yeah, attack the mesh. I think last year was just the defensive line didn't play well, and it really allowed Wake Forest to get that passing game going. And, and then they had to play zone after that, and that allowed the match to get more rushing yards. I guess, okay, let me guess what yours is. I guess before I say my key, I want to say it's funny that we're both talking about the defense because the worry at the start of the year was all about the offense, and now we're sitting here talking about keys for a defense, which is nice. But I guess the thing I want to talk about is last week Mitch Griffiths turned the ball over five times. Wake Forest has shown that they'll turn the ball over. He has six interceptions on the year. The whole had three last week. And Clemson has opportunities, especially in a home run route. Too. He does, and that, and the way the Clemson defensive line is playing right now, you can create turnovers on this team. And if you do that, that really limits a lot of things that Wake Forest can do. And you can get out to an early lead, especially with the way your offense is playing and the way they turned. I believe it was 21 um, points off of turnovers last week, and they'll yeah. match that this week. Might even score. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they, yeah. they, they scored once this year. Or is it twice? I can't mm-hmm. remember. And then they almost scored with Xavier's run the other mm-hmm. day. So I just, they, he was real close. So, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm with you on that. I think mm-hmm. defense, the defense is the key to this game. I think the offense is going to do what they need to do. That's what I'm saying. It's a yeah. completely different field. It's like, yeah. And it's nothing against the defense because the defense is playing well, too. Yeah. Our defense is a top yeah. 10 defense. Uh, yeah. But it's like we don't have to sit here and be so worried about the offense with club making and everything. It's like, okay, they're going to go out and do their thing. I don't got to worry about it. Right, exactly. See, I'm the exact opposite of you. Well, you're an offensive guy. I'm not worried about defense <laughs> at all this year because Clemson's loaded up. Well, I'm not worried. It's not worried. I'm not worried. You just say the key. Mm-hmm. The Clemson, key. Clemson just plays Clemson defense with the talent they got this week. Wake Forest is going to struggle to score more than 10, 14 points, I think. Okay. So we've got another other side of the ball, offense. Um, you know, my key, and it's not, it's, I guess it's, I'll, I'll, I'll use it as my key this week. But what I want to see is I just want to see the continued growth of the offense. Mm-hmm. I want to see Cade continue to be consistent. I want to see another balanced game where Clemson can throw the ball when they want to. Mm-hmm. They can run the ball when they want to. Um, I'd like to. I'm interested to see how the splits of the carries go. I know Cam wrote on some of that on the analytics side this week as well. Moffat's really coming on strong, mm-hmm. uh, running the ball. I'd like to see Shipley. Come on a little stronger, running the ball and get them, get that two-headed monster really going with some long runs from both those guys. So that's what I want to see: just balance, continued progress from Cade. Um, one thing I don't want to see Saturday, which Davos kind of said day to day, and it's looking better. I don't want to see Nate Wiggins on the field. I don't want to see Antonio Wiggins. You don't need him. No. Nope. I want them if they need to be available for an emergency. That's cool. They might play according to some of the stuff Davos said, but. I wouldn't play him. I'd give him the next week. I'd give him the off week. Mm-hmm. Get him to come back 100% for that stretch run where there's some obviously talented teams. North Carolina, by the way, they're finally getting that receiver back 
Yeah, uh, you can see that way gave changed that. That's what they their offense up a little bit. So mm-hmm. what that means is they finally had the right lawsuit threat to get the NCAA to back off. <laughs> because my the guys, they've tried everything mm-hmm. this season, and then all of a sudden, miraculously, oh, we're gonna let it play. Um, so that you know that helps North Carolina, which didn't need a lot of help, but that's gonna elevate that offense a little bit. Yeah. All right, well, prediction time. Well, first of all, I want to say, talking about your key, talking about the offense and the running game, I think this week I'm going to go ahead and predict it. Clemson's going to have over 500 yards offense, and they're going to, I believe, 250 of that will come on the ground or more. So, so they're going to do the 200-200 and win the game this time? Yes, they're going to do the 200-200 <laughs> win it. I th- it may be the 200-250, 250-250 win it. I really think, the, I think what you've seen the last two weeks from this offense in the passing game Consistently now going and doing it back to back weeks, showing they can do it against high level defenses that have been playing well all year. I think it shows now other teams have to respect that. And so that's going to loosen up the running game. I think you're going to see Clemson's running game take off as a result. So I'm going to go ahead and predict 250 yards. 250. Yeah. And 250 right. passing. Uh, now, that the, translate the scoreboard. That's going to translate good for the scoreboard. I because I think, they do. Because I, because I think <laughs> the defense is going to better do it. Well, as long as they. Convert those chances. Uh, I think the defense is going to do their thing. I think they'll they'll play well this week. Um, I think they want to redeem themselves after what happened last year against Wake Forest. Even though this isn't the same Wake Forest offense, they're going to act like it is. So unfortunately for those guys on the Wake Forest offensive side of the ball, you're going to catch all of that for Sam Hartman and those guys from last year. I think they're going to be on a mission and they're going to want to destroy Wake Forest this year, this week. So with all that said. I think Clemson's offense really gets going, and, and they take advantage of the opportunities defense is going to give them. I'm going to go Clemson 42, Wake Forest 13. 42-13. All right, Cam. That's that, that was close. close. Yeah, I, got, I mean, about as close as he could have gotten to steal my number. I'm going to go 45-14. I'll say they go. They get two touchdowns. They don't get any field goals. It'll be they'll score one. I think around the second quarter, I just get one to make it look interesting, and then. Clemson rolls, especially in the second half. So, and they, as you said, score a lot of touchdowns this week. All right, 42, 45. Mm-hmm. I think y'all are pretty close on the Wake Forest score. I'm gonna go nice big blowout. Never would have expected. Statement this. game for Clemson. We're going 59. Wow. To 10. Wow. All right, you heard it here first. Yeah, man. So go put all awesome. your money on this. You, what did you say the over was over earlier? 52 and a half. Clemson's going to cover that themselves. So 59 points for the Vegas. Wills, t- 250, 250 is going to actually translate on the scoreboard. Like, well, lots right. of points. Well, they'll do more than 250 uh, if they do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they do what Cameron said earlier, if Clemson's getting three or four turnovers, that certainly translates yeah. to more. Yeah. You won't need all those yards. So, <laughs> um, that's, I, the good news is off. Three of us feel like Clemson should win this one easily. They should. Go into the bye week, continue to build on some conference confidence, maybe get a few boats next week more in the polls. Maybe more than five. Uh, a little bit of respect. Yeah. Uh, I doubt it, but we'll see. That's coming, though. The yeah. team continues to, to do what they can do. And if, um, they, if, they, if they only played in the SEC, they could still be ranked. Right. Top mm-hmm. 15, probably. Yeah, yeah. Top 15, no um, doubt. Three maybe two. one day. Yeah, maybe one day, you know, because LSU – Got hammered by the team Clemson took the overtime, and the LSU still ranked. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Just saying, big big game for. Clemson. But it was the first game of the year. Will come on, and I'm going to do something else here, guys. Since I got a few minutes before, we do have uh, the Crash Course guys coming in to do their studio video Talk here. About a little bit. I'm gonna put you guys on the spot. Y'all didn't know this was coming. I did. not This was great. Um, yeah. I'm gonna start it, and then I'm gonna give you guys. Um, is Clemson going to win out regular season from here? I'm going to say yes, they are. <sighs> and I'm going to put you guys on the spot. See, I got him. Ooh. Yeah, you got I mean, I got to stay true to what I thought at the beginning of the year. And I thought if Clemson lost the game at the beginning of the year, I said that game was going to be Notre Dame. And I still got to stay true to it because Notre Dame, yeah, Notre Dame struggled on offense, but their defense is nasty. I mean, it's nasty. Their def- Every time I've watched them play, their defense has looked good. They really shut down what I think is a – Really, really good Ohio State offense, and should have won that game. Um, and I know it's in Death Valley. I know Clemson's, you know, plays well there, obviously. And 
And then if Clemson, you don't want Clemson to lose two games in the same year in Death Valley. Clemson, but Clemson's going to end that talk of, oh, oh Notre Dame's won so many regular season ACC. I hope you're right, but I'm going to go ahead and say, oh. I'm just going to say nine and three. Nine I'm going to say three. that's the one they lose is Notre Dame. Hmm. Sorry, Robert, but I'm going to have to agree with Will here. Um, <laughs> Y'all know I'm right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here's the thing. This year, like obviously Florida State and Duke was close up to a point when these games they haven't they yet to prove it to me, and if they prove it to me, I'll be happy. But when these games get close late, it hasn't gone Clemson's way so far. And sometimes the football gods just aren't in your favor, and right now they haven't been. So until that changes, I'm gonna have to just stick with. I think it's nine and three, and they lose to Notre Dame and San Martin. Yeah, and that's good. If Notre Dame's the game they lose. That's good. Because Clemson still is not good. Well, no, but if you're going to lose a game, that's the one to lose. Mm-hmm. Because if, mm-hmm. if you lose another ACC game, then, yeah, you're just totally eliminated from any chance to get that shit. But if you only lose to Notre Dame and you went out in the ACC, now you still have an opportunity, depends on what happens in the rest of the conference, to, to, to get yourself into that championship game. Kyle Parker sat in there a couple weeks ago and talked about Cade and his progress and how that – like how he was just going to take a big jump at some point in this season. I think we're, we're seeing that jump. Yeah. A Talk little bit at a time. Yeah. Um, I just think Clemson's defense is too daggone good. If they get the offense to continue to improve, which so far they have. Now, injuries could change everything right? Um, from a depth standpoint. But that was a little extra. I like it, man. Yeah. And if we're wrong, you can play this back. And yes, I'm fine with it. Uh, that means we're going to like a, 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 a New Year's Six Bowl as opposed to the Cheese It or the Pop Tart Bowl. I'm all for you proving that to me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and they, that's, you know, obviously our opinions are different than they were before the Duke game. Yeah. yeah. Nobody expected that. So we'll see how the rest of this goes. But we'll have everything covered for you this weekend from Death Valley. Um, Got some great students helping us out in the press box. Will will be up there. Cameron will be up there. Bart and I will be on the field. Uh, Bart, obviously, you guys know, the best photographer in the business. So we'll have all kinds of coverage of this 59-10 to 10 win for the time. <laughs> and next week, everybody will be excited headed to the bye week. So stay tuned to Clemson Insider for the most complete coverage of Clemson Athletics. Hey, Tiger fans. Make sure you go follow the Clemson Insider for the best coverage of Clemson Athletics and recruiting. Nobody does it better.